Hi and welcome back to a new video. My original plan was to review another RTX 5080 that you can't buy anyway. So I thought we are changing the plan and we will recap the previous month, look at the RTX 5080 and 5090 launch, especially in regard of what happened in the previous two or three days with yeah the start of the sale of 5090 and 5080. Insane things happened and we have to talk about it. Thermal Greasy Duranaut is our new high-end thermal paste and the successor of Cryonaut. It's even better performing, it is much easier to apply, it is cheaper and it's much more durable. That's where the name comes from. Especially if you're now maybe considering to buy a new PC, then I would highly recommend that you're looking into this thermal paste. So let's continue with this video. And before we get to the price topic, we have to talk about Nvidia and how they are cooperating or maybe not cooperating as much with their partners. Especially in this launch, I have been involved in some of the development steps quite early because we received products and PCB samples early in to develop water cooling samples or water cooling blocks for our Thermal Grizzly products. And you might assume Nvidia being one of the biggest technology companies in the world that everything there goes smooth and very professional and while that might be the case in Nvidia internally it seems like there is a lot of room for improvement with Nvidia communicating with its partners. Before we get to the price topic, I was interested in finding out how the time schedule worked out behind the scenes before the cards were made. And I reached out to a couple of partners and tried to get some information together and saw how things matched and how things aligned. And it seemed like in mid or end September they received the design kit, which is basically all the information they need to start working on the new GPUs. But it's not the time where they receive retail GPUs or anything that is ready with a retail driver. So in between that from like October, November, December, they had time basically three months to develop the PCBs and the coolers and everything that goes with it. And then I was interested especially in how much time did they have from having retail GPUs put onto like a final PCB and then evaluating everything. Just, you know, having a final card, testing this, getting the BIOS ready and everything. And the replies were interesting because they reached from two days to almost two weeks, which seems mind blowing. Can you imagine that you're preparing a $3,000 product and you maybe spend, I don't know, five days actually testing the product you're putting on sale for this amount of money. This yeah, leads or could lead potentially to a lot of failures, not testing the product properly, maybe something that we also saw with the Astro cards from Asus where the rear fan is just extremely loud and maybe that's just the lack of time, the lack of being able to test products properly. Steve from Gamers Nexus in his recent paper launch video was also looking at this topic and he was trying to get data together and find out how many Founders Edition cards were distributed prior to launch and also maybe at launch. And what he figured out is that there is always on those review boxes a quantity written. For example, for me it's 20 out of 91 and then he tried to put together how many Founders Edition were distributed globally and it seemed to be a couple of hundreds, which is not too much to all the reviewers and then also some SIs which are basically building pre-built PCs. What I found more interesting is the date that is written on it and for me it's the 8th of January where it seems like this card was made. And now if you think about it that even Nvidia had their cards only ready early January. How would the partners have them ready early? That doesn't align or doesn't work out especially I mean Nvidia would have the best access to both parts and also information. The parts obviously come from TSMC. But still, if you think about it, the time in between having the first cards ready, testing, evaluating, sending them out to reviewers or even to the point of where you want to actually sell the product is extremely short. This might be one explanation, for example, for news like this, where MSI said that they have to postpone the launch or the sale of the RTX 5090 in the US to the 6th of February, simply because there was not enough time. This will definitely lead to that the product has to age at the customer. It is just not possible that there was enough time to validate everything and make sure that nothing ages badly over time. For example, I saw that Gigabyte plans to use liquid metal on some of their 5090 SKUs and while this might definitely work fine if it was executed well, I'm just asking myself how it's possible that yeah, you know, this was tested properly with just this little amount of time. Then we saw 
tiny things like with the S-Volt card and the fan. Now I'm just asking myself how might this lead to problems maybe with 12 volt high power. It's just not possible that, for example, somebody tested the card for half a year with the connector under load, right? It's, it's physically impossible. And that's why I see a potentially high risk that we're buying cards for a couple thousand of dollars and they're just aging and being like prototyped, developed at the customer. I can also understand NVIDIA to a certain degree why they're doing what they're doing, why they're putting so much control and force over the things they're distributing or not distributing. For example, the fact that no AIB would have a retail driver to test performance months before launch. That's just not happening. They might get a driver that allows to install the cart, do some basic testing, but for example, you can't run a benchmark. The reason for this is probably our industry and the nature of everything being leaked. If you just look at Intel, for example, it's basically the opposite. Typically, you can find information sometimes years ahead, maybe half year ahead with all the performance information specs being leaked. I think NVIDIA is a company that is doing this best, where they have the best control over things. But also, we can see the negative aspect of this approach. You can also get an impression of how rushed things were executed in this launch by looking at this from an outside perspective and just looking at the launch itself. On the 23rd of January, they launched the Founders Edition and a lot of reviews went live just featuring the Founders Edition. The next day, the embargo was lifted for all the partner cards, for example, for an Astral or for a Paylet card. But you could hardly find reviews. There were a couple of reviews, but not as many as I was used to. Normally, if you look back, RTX 30 gen, 20, 40, whatever. It was often the case that NVIDIA staged the reviews. So you would have the Founders Edition first and then the partner cards. But typically, when the embargo was lifted, there were reviews. And this was not even this was the case at this launch. Not surprising in how the entire first sales day was executed, which was insanely bad. The 30th of January. At least here in Germany, it was 3 p.m. and we had a couple of people here at Grizzly, also enthusiasts who were planning or thinking about buying an RTX 5090 for themselves, for their own PCs. So we were checking out different locations, you know, like Mindfactory, Alternate, Case King, and of course also the Nvidia shop for the Founders Edition. We also checked this quite early. And then, for example, I spotted something interesting. That was just after 2 p.m., so almost one hour ahead of the launch of the, of the sales embargo, I spotted that in the NVIDIA store, it suddenly changed that the 5090 and 5080 were listed as bestsellers, which didn't make sense because the, the sale didn't officially start yet. And I was at this point, I was still joking about that. Well, two days later, we figured out why it was this strange. So PC Games Hardware, a media in Germany, did some very good research and they figured out that the fulfillment for NVIDIA Germany for the Founders Edition was supposed to be done by the shop ProShop. And apparently the sales link from ProShop was leaked prior to launch. And PC Games Hardware figured out that all the Founders Editions were bought by bots between 1480 and 1427 in the afternoon. So there was never a chance for a single customer in Germany, for a normal customer, to buy any of the Founders Edition, which is absolutely mind-blowing. How can you execute a launch this bad? And then also PC Games Hardware reached out to ProShop to ask what is going on, because apparently this sales link was leaked to somebody who wrote a bot, and this bot then bought all of the cards. And then ProShop just said that they have to reach out to NVIDIA for a statement. So far there is no statement, and I'm curious if NVIDIA will even release a statement at all. If you then also think about how much work it is to prepare a launch like that with the 50 series, so even like prior to CES and CES, all the keynote, uh, yeah, you know the work that NVIDIA has also re with the reviewers and everything, and then the sales embargoes and stuff, and then it ex gets executed in this way, like so insanely terrible. I can totally understand why everybody is mad. They're mad for a reason. And talking about being mad, Friday afternoon I received a link from somebody who was also quite mad and he linked me to the ASUS webshop. And to give you some context, ASUS prior to the launch communicated the MSRP here in Germany for the Astral, which was about 2,950 euros, which is already quite a lot of money, obviously. But then going into the web shop, I saw the Astral being listed there for 4,500 euros. And then I started my OBS screen recording and refreshed the page. And by that time, the price was already increased to 4,900 euro. And then when I wanted to just 
click on add to cart to see if it was there, the cart was gone. The cart was sold. But it was there. It was available first for about 4,500 euro. And then, so they probably sold one or a couple of that at that price and then increased it again to 4,900. And even at that price, the card was being sold, which I find kind of hilarious. You know, if you're the vendor and you're communicating an MSRP and then you're selling the same card almost 2,000 US dollars more expensive in your own web shop. What is the point that we're even talking about MSRPs at all? And we have to ask ourselves the question, both you in the community and me as a reviewer, if for the future it might or it makes sense at all to talk about any of the MSRPs, because this, this is absolutely crazy. That's why I rarely talk about prices in general on my channel, especially prior to a launch. For example, if Nvidia lists the 5090 with 2000 US dollars or here in Germany, 2300 euros, we know that this is not going to happen. It's not the real price of the card because the real price of the card is what people are willing to pay. A great example for this is also the website StockX where you can buy sneakers, but for a longer period of time, you can also buy graphics cards there. And if we just go to the sales of the previous two days of the RTX 5090 Founders Edition, we can see that they have been sold for a price between 4,000 and 6,000 euros. Imagine if I told you in my RTX 5090 Founders Edition review that this card will cost anything between 4,000 and 6,000 US dollars. Everybody would have gone crazy, right? People rather want to believe that the card will be available for 2,000 US dollars, which is simply not the case. The reason for this is, as you probably all know from school, we're living in a social market economy and all the prices are regulated or dictated simply by supply and demand. There's nothing else. People want to believe about the MSRPs, but these MSRPs, I mean, they're proven to not be reality. Just think back of RTX 30 and RTX 40 Gen. It will not happen. It becomes also more clear if you think about Nvidia communicating, let's say 50 US dollars as MSRP for the 5090, then everybody will know that's not gonna happen. It will be more expensive. And the exact same thing happens with the $2,000 MSRP. It is pretty simple. You know, we see all those scalpers and bots, what we're hating on, like stuff I also dislike. But then again, they're not the cause of the issue. The cause of the issue is that there's simply not enough supply. That's it. The demand is so high, but the supply is so low that we see these prices and there's nothing you can do about it. In the only thing or the only way this can be changed is Nvidia changing the launch policy. Stop rushing things. Stop selling a product like you're overhyping this before for weeks and weeks. And then you have a couple hundreds of cards available for sale. Obviously you're increasing the demand so much, but you're undersupplying so hard that it's, it's simply impossible to keep the MSRP. It will not work as long as we're in social market economy. We can hate on the bots and on the scalpers, but they're just, they're just abusing the situation, which is obviously not nice, but only Nvidia can solve this by doing a proper launch and preparing a solid stock. There are so many examples of how crazy this launch was. For example, I found a video by PG Tech and she was visiting Micro Center on the day of the launch. And there she was interviewing a couple of people and one guy pointed out that he was paying 500 US dollars simply to get the voucher to being able to buy a 5090. So apparently this micro center had 67 pieces, which was more than any other micro center in the US. And he then got voucher number 36, which allowed him to buy a 5090. I mean, the 5090 is still very expensive, but you're just paying 500 US dollars simply to being able to buy one. How absurd is that? I can see this in pretty much every forum, news feed, YouTube video that people are hating on the scalpers and on the bots and everything. And while I totally agree, while I'm not happy about this, the real root cause is still the very limited supply. And I wish that Nvidia will change this in the future. And I wish that we are targeting our criticism a little bit more in that direction. Because as long as we keep hating the scalpers, it's not Nvidia that gets the blame. And I think they should get the blame. Because also if you look at the entire picture, you know, vendors telling me that they have a couple of times to really validate a product, this is not a satisfying situation. Imagine being an engineer and you're working on a product and they're telling you you have a couple of days to validate something and it's just, it's physically impossible to figure out everything that could go wrong in this time frame. I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people who are unhappy about 
things or about how things are executed. And there is a huge room for improvement also from NVIDIA's side. Because if you think about the theoretical situation of every shop having, let's say, 10,000 cards available for launch, then you could just list them with the MSRP and people would be able to buy them at an MSRP because it wouldn't even make sense to write a bot. It wouldn't even make sense for scalpers to buy anything because there would, such, there would be such an oversupply and everybody would be happy. Also, if we had more time to review things, if engineers had more time to yeah, develop their products properly. I think doing the launch the way it is executed right now, everybody loses. And NVIDIA, I'm also sure that you're losing in this situation because if you're thinking of Situations like that happened in Germany with ProShop and then bots buying this and you're, you don't even have control over your own product. Being the biggest technology company in the world, it should not happen, you know? You should have more control over your own stuff. And I think you should reevaluate how you're executing things and maybe give a little bit more time for yourself, for the partners, for everybody, so we can pay appropriate prices as well. And that next time it might be better. All right, that's my 5090 launch rant. I hope you enjoyed it. And next time we will still probably do a 5080 video. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.